Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Convictions thrown out against the man who served 15 years for a fire that killed five young children. So why is he still in jail tonight? Johnson & Johnson joins the booster debate, what the company is saying about a second shot and how well the vaccine is working in the real world. All coming up, we're going to begin though here at 5 with a weather alert, a flood watch in effect for the entire region as rain begins falling. It is not expected to stop until Thursday and we're expecting uh, inches of rain over the next few days. We want to get right over to Andrew here at 5 with where things stand right now, Andrew. And Kimberly and Devin, you remember going through this round after round of heavy rain earlier this season. Well, it's on our doorstep once again and a flood watch is up for Detroit and all of Southeast Michigan. It's been in effect since 4 o'clock this afternoon. It does not expire until 8 a.m. Thursday, not tomorrow, but Thursday. So for 24 to 36 hours, flooding is possible. And that's what a watch means, by the way. Flooding's not happening now or it's not imminent, but it is possible. And much of the heavier rain is widespread. Heavy rain is down to our south. We're seeing pockets of heavy rain. You can see that here around Ann Arbor, western side of Oakland County, but that is it for now but a lot more moisture down to our south yet to roll on top of us. In fact, we're looking at partly to mostly cloudy skies right now over Detroit, even some sunshine getting through and 74 degrees. So the heavy rain is not here yet, but look how quickly it arrives within a matter of hours from now. By 9, 10 o'clock, the moisture down to the south gets its act together, moves on top of us, and we're looking at this being round one of the heavy rain, especially by midnight and overnight. When I say round one, this round one will see one to two inches by breakfast time or lunch time tomorrow. Second round brings just about as much rain. So I'll go over those rain totals for you for the complete next couple of days. And of course, your seven day forecast in minutes. Andrew, thank you. And with the heavier bands of rain expected to move through overnight and into tomorrow morning, you'll want to wake up with the local four news today crew. They'll be monitoring conditions all night and bring you weather and traffic on the fours. And with the rain coming, the Great Lakes Water Authority is bracing for the potential flooding that may happen over the next few days. We've had these worries so many times over these last couple of months. The GLWA says it is keeping crews to uh, man the pumps around the clock. Let's bring in Larry Spruill live on Detroit's east side, which uh, Larry, we know it's been hit particularly hard this year. And they are focusing on this area, Devin and Kimberly. I just spoke with the Great Lakes Water Authority and they tell me they are ready. As we mentioned, they have crews at their pumping stations. Those crews will stay there until the end of the storm. But tonight they are asking people to get ready for potential flooding. This is a significant amount of rain. When you see this NOAA rain uh, forecast is six and a half inches uh, over the next three days, this is not something that is easy. Uh, for us to be able to pass. Suzanne Coffey, the interim CEO for the Great Lakes Water Authority, says the rain is coming and more than likely there will be flooding over the next few days. But Coffey says Great Lakes Water Authority is ready. We have our Connors Creek pump station fully ready, staffed, people there ready to troubleshoot if, if we need to. Coffee says give the complexity of the system's operations and the fact that pumps can only be activated during a storm event, troubleshooting can only occur in real time. Our food pump station is the station we've called our energy suppliers. They are staffing with us. Uh, in addition to the energy suppliers, we have contractors and consultants there to assist us so that we can uh, not only troubleshoot if we need to, but also diagnose some of the power related issues that we're having there. They're also asking residents in those flooding areas, especially on Detroit's east side, to clean out their basements prior to the storm and flooding. I would suggest that you make sure that your valuables are out of the basement, your pets, yourself out of the basement. And also the city of Detroit is asking Detroiters to do that as well, to clean out their basements. Meanwhile, I spoke with people who live on the east side, right where we are, about this upcoming storm, their preparations, and how they feel about the rain and potential flooding. I am working on that part of the story all new tonight at 6. We are live on the Detroit's east side tonight. Larry Spruill, Local 4. Okay, Larry. Well, three weeks ago, the Oakland County prosecutor recommended authorities drop a murder conviction. That conviction is against a man serving a life sentence for a Royal Oak Township fire that killed five children. Jason Colthorpe is in the newsroom. Jason, both prosecutors and defense attorneys agreed that Jawan Deering should be freed on bond today. 
Yeah, that's right, guys. Uh, it didn't happen, but 15 years after Deering was convicted of the crimes, he has been granted a new trial. The 50 year old's case was heard this afternoon at the Oakland County Circuit Court. The hearing comes after a review of Deering's case by a special prosecutor that Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald hired. The special prosecutor concluded that the failure of the prosecutor at the time to disclose a certain piece of evidence that could have helped the defense constituted prosecutorial misconduct. Both prosecutors and defense attorneys filed a motion to vacate the conviction and ask for a new trial. I have not in the 12 years working on cases like this come across a case that involves so many grounds for relief to be granted. I'm standing here, Your Honor, asking you to vacate this conviction which I acknowledge is highly unusual. Juwan Deering was convicted of murder in 2006, and we now know that Mr. Deering did not get a fair trial. Today, I'm asking the court to vacate Mr. Deering's conviction and address bond. Now, the judge did agree that the defendant's constitutional rights were violated and set aside the convictions. He plans to order a new trial. The defendant remains charged and released on bond. Uh, the, the bond was denied, which means Deering must remain in prison for now. Of course, we'll be following that. Devin. Sure will. All right, Jason. Weeks after being told to leave their homes, some residents in those evacuated areas of Flat Rock finally have the all clear to head back. That's right. We're talking about Zone 2 you see here on this map. Priya Mann spent the day in the neighborhood talking to residents happy to get back home, but still a little worried about any possible lasting effects. Like so many of her neighbors, Cassandra Moore spent about two weeks in a hotel. On Sunday, she decided to come back home, pitched a tent in her backyard. The next day, zone two was cleared. It was like camping, <laughs> but it beat the motel. Living out of suitcases following the Ford assembly plant leak in Flat Rock took a toll on the Moore family. And I just told my husband, I can't do the motel thing again. After evacuating for weeks, even the treehouse looked appealing, but the windows are exposed. So I told him, let's just put a tent in the backyard. We'll sleep in the backyard during the night and then we'll just go in the fence to return. It's been kind of stressful because I'm commuting back and forth. You know, I'm going to Dearborn. They gave me a nice room and I'm traveling back and forth, but it's a little bit stressful for me. Ford has been providing evacuated families with hotel accommodations and food vouchers. MDHHS and the CDC used data from a dozen houses that had elevated benzene levels or gasoline odors to confirm sewer testing showed air levels in homes are safe. They said they cleaned out the sewer and they said it was safe to go back. So I'm thinking I feel safe. I haven't smelled nothing in my house. And I'm constantly going downstairs sniffing. Well, it's kind of leery, but um, if they're saying it, I'm hoping they're being honest with us. So we're just going with, you know, with the, what the city's saying. Sure. So we're just trying to believe what they say, you know. I mean, hopefully they're telling us everything's right, everything's okay. Now there's about 630 homes in zone two. Some families are waiting for written test results before they return home. Ford is continuing to provide them with accommodations. We have that number up on your screen. As for zone one, there's about 500 homes there. Officials have not yet ruled it's safe for those residents to return. We'll continue to follow this developing story. Reporting live tonight, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Okay, Priya. Tonight, Johnson & Johnson is joining the booster debate, announcing new research that finds a second dose of its vaccine offers a major boost in protection. The company is also sharing new information about how the J&J &J vaccine is performing in the real world. Dr. Frank Me George here with what we need to know. Frank. Yeah, Kim and Devin, so one and done was the appeal for many who received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But in recent months, those 14.8 million Americans have been waiting and waiting for word about whether or not they also might need a booster. Well, tonight, J&J &J is making the case for, shall we say, to and through. Johnson & Johnson sharing the results of three new studies. The first providing reassurance about real-world effectiveness. J&J &J says its vaccine was 79% effective at preventing COVID-19 infections and 81% effective at preventing hospitalizations. Of particular note, it was just as effective in states as effective as the Pfizer and Moderna two-dose vaccines. But researchers say giving a booster after six months increased protection by 12-fold, suggesting there are benefits to holding off on that boost. The CDC's advisory panel is set to meet tomorrow and Thursday to discuss Pfizer boosters for high-risk individuals. Dr. Anthony Fauci expects decisions on Moderna and J&J &J boosters won't be far behind. We fully anticipate that within a period of a couple to three weeks, that there will be enough information 
on the data that will be presented to the FDA by J&J &J and by Moderna that will be able to proceed and get those data analyzed to be able to move with the booster in those categories. Now, as the other vaccine makers have done, J&J shared the new information in a news release. It has not been peer reviewed or published yet. J&J is in fact expected to share the full data with the FDA very soon. Uh, Doc, let's go back to the Pfizer uh, vaccine. Uh, we've talked about boosters for high risk groups, older citizens, those with immune problems. Uh, how soon are we expecting those groups to get the green light for that booster shot? Well, you know, the CDC advisory panel is widely expected to vote on recommendations this Thursday. After that, of course, the CDC director needs to sign off on the decision, but that's happened pretty quickly with prior authorizations. So in theory, boosters could be a go by Friday. Mm. And remember, this is the same vaccine that is already widely yeah. in use. We'll watch it at the end of this week. All right, Doc. Well, they are not going to let rain get in the way this week in Pontiac. New at 5, we're headed to Motorbella to see why this event is so different from the auto show you're used to seeing. Also, the issue has hit critical mass. You've heard about a shortage of judges. Well, we're going to talk about what's happening at the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office amid a massive backlog of cases coming up. But first, the search intensifies for Gabby Petito's fiance as the autopsy results have just been released. We'll have that next.